Hey, super and brave friends. I'm Joel Karlewski, the super brave teacher. And today, admittedly, it's a tough video and it's a beautiful video because we're gonna be talking about gay sexual assault and we're gonna be talking about forgiveness. I call myself the super and brave teacher, not at all because I feel super or brave the majority of the time. I have called myself the super and brave teacher because I want to inspire myself to start doing super and brave things every day. To inspire myself to spark bravery in all of you and in the world to make it better today, especially, especially for the underdog and especially for LGBTQ plus teachers and students. And the way I'm choosing to do that is sharing my stories so that we can make true change by realizing that our stories are a lot more similar than they are different. And a big part of my story is being closeted. A lot of times people think being closeted is scary because you're just hiding your identity and you're hiding this big truth about yourself. Cha-ching, I agree with that. I very much agree that it was hard to hide such a big part of me because like I've said before, I am 100% gay. And when you take that out, you take yourself out of the picture, right? So yeah, being closeted, you're hiding your truth. But being closeted is also scary because you are hiding your secrets and you are hiding what's going on that you feel you can't tell anybody else about. So like I said before, I went away to a prep school. I went away to a boarding school. And when I was there right away freshman year, I was sexually assaulted. And I felt that I couldn't talk to anybody about it, even my closest friends, even my family, because I was afraid of outing myself. I was afraid of people saying, wait a second, why did this go on? And why were you a target? And whether that's a valid worry or not, that's what I felt and that's what I worried about. So when these things would happen again and again in high school, I never told anybody about it. And I thought, you know what, just high school, <laughs> get through it, and then you'll go to college. And I went to college and same thing happened, sexual assault happened. And I realized, wait, this is a power thing. This is people preying on people who they feel are not gonna tell people about it. They're not gonna do anything about it. So that's why people like me get sexually assaulted. And maybe people like you get sexually assaulted. And we need to collectively say these things so that we can also say it needs to stop today. We need to make it better today. It is also on my heart to tell you that if you were sexually assaulted, it is not your fault and it never will be. And I have been doing the good hard work with myself of telling myself, you know what, Joel, it is not your fault and it never will be. You didn't do anything. It is not because you said something, did something or are something, it's because once again, this power dynamic. So if you were sexually assaulted, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. And guess what? It's not mine either. I also want to model for you that you are not my therapist. You are not my psychologist. So the, the deep stories and the deep feelings and emotions and all that stuff behind this, I have gotten to work through with therapy and I will continue to seek out help as I see fit. And if you need help, please know that you can call the National Sexual Assault Hotline anytime. And the number is 1-800-656-4673. Once again, that's 1-800-656-4673. If you need help, please go get it. There's no shame in that. And that's why I'm also not ashamed to say I love therapy. I've been doing therapy and it works. It is amazing. Please get help if you need it. There's no problem in that or in you. And now I want to talk to you about forgiveness. Forgiveness is the best and it is completely worth it. I'm going to read you two poems and I'm also going to talk to you about what forgiveness is not. And I'm intentionally reading from this book, The Book of Forgiveness by Desmond Tutu, and sharing what it is not so that you, as you might be thinking watching this video, realize that I am not denying my feelings. I am not letting people off the hook. I'm not saying no justice for sexual assault victims. I am saying for me, I have seen and know the power of forgiveness and it works for me and maybe it'll work for you. So let me start with reading what forgiveness is not. 
Forgiveness is not easy. It requires hard work and a consistent willingness. Forgiveness is not weakness. It requires courage, bravery, and strength. Forgiveness does not subvert justice. It creates space for justice to be enacted with a purity of purpose that does not include revenge. Forgiveness is not forgiving. It requires a fearless remembering of hurt. Forgiveness is not quick. It can take several journeys through the cycles of remembering and grief before one can truly forgive and be free. So that's what forgiveness is not. And this is the journey I am on. Not easy, not weakness, not subverting justice, not forgetting, and it's not quick. One of the most powerful activities from this book for me has been the rock activities. And what they have you do is find your rock and then they have you do a variety of activities with the rock, including carrying it around all day and realizing the weight of your grief or squeezing the rock in your hand and opening it up and letting go. Um, it's kind of fitting because the moment I started reading this book, all of a sudden one of my students said, Senor Golovsky, I made this for you. And I'm like, what? How beautiful that I now have a rock that's painted and it says brave that I get to carry around with me every day. And this has been the symbol for me, even before this Kevin Spacey stuff started happening, of I get to do the daily good hard work of forgiveness. Get a rock. It's powerful. It's powerful. And now I will end with two poems from the Book of Forgiving. I highly recommend it. I listened to it on audiobook. Then I purchased it. Um, I highly recommend it. So this first one is called Prayer Before the Prayer. I want to be willing to forgive, but I dare not ask for the will to forgive in case you give it to me and I am not yet ready. I'm not yet ready for my heart to soften. I'm not yet ready to be vulnerable again. Not yet ready to see that there's humanity in my tormentor's eyes or that the one who hurt me may also have cried. I am not yet ready for the journey. I am not yet interested in the path. I am at the prayer before the prayer of forgiveness. Grant me the will to want to forgive. Grant it to me, not yet, but soon. Can I even form the words, forgive me? Dare I even look? Do I dare to see the hurt I have caused? I can glimpse all the shattered pieces of that fragile thing, that soul trying to rise in the broken wings of hope. But only out of the corner of my eye, I'm afraid of it. And if I'm afraid to see, how can I not be afraid to say, forgive me? Is there a place where we can meet, you and me? The place in the middle, the no man's la land, where we straddle the lines, where you are right and I am right too, and both of us are wrong and wronged? Can we meet there? and look for the place where the path begins, the path that ends when we forgive. And one more poem, it says, I will forgive you. The words are so small, but there's a universe hidden in them. When I forgive you, all those cords of resentment, pain and sadness that had wrapped themselves around my heart will be gone. When I forgive you, you will no longer define me. You measured me and assessed me and decided that you could hurt me. I didn't count, but I will forgive you. Because I do count, I do matter. I am bigger than the image you have of me. I am stronger, I am more beautiful, and I am definitely more precious than you thought me. I will forgive you. My forgiveness is not a gift that I'm giving to you, when I forgive you, my forgiveness will be a gift that gives itself to me. So that's why I wanted to end with these two poems. <sighs> because we forgive for ourselves. We forgive to set ourselves free. Because I do matter. I do matter. I do count. And I want to finish with that. You do matter. You do count. Sexual assault is real. Sexual assault needs to be talked about. Sexual assault needs to be said to stop, listen, no more. You do not have power over me anymore. 
And we need to start the work of forgiving, forgiving ourselves, forgiving ourselves for being silent maybe, forgiving ourselves for not saying what we wanted to say or felt we couldn't say, and also forgiving the others, our tormentors, the people who hurt us. It is not easy, but guess what? We are learning through channels like this, through so many voices that we are not alone, you are not alone, and you never will be. So thank you, thank you, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for listening to my part of my story and for joining me with the hard work of forgiving, with forgiving. I forgive you. I forgive you and I forgive myself. You are enough, you are loved, just as you are. And Joel, watching this video a little later, you are beautiful, you are loved, you are enough. You do matter, you do count, just because you are you. Bye friends, keep being super and brave.